Hi, this is Deborah Peters and welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm a little tardy getting this out today and as you can see, I'm headed out the door here shortly for a lunchtime workout. Nothing has gone as planned today and we all get those days. So don't let it get to you and make sure that you're willing to be flexible so that you're moving forward without judgment and without being hard on yourself. And today's show is about creating a strategy and goals and things that you would like to have happen in your life for 2020. Now, the biggest mistake that I see businesses and business leaders and people in general make for the next year as we close out a decade, it's even bigger. The biggest mistake I see them make is resolutions. So I want to tell you, resolutions do not work. And the reason resolutions don't work is because there has to be a change at a deep level in order to get new results. Otherwise, we just fall back into patterns and we repeat and we re recreate and we just, we rethink and we refeel the old way. And when that happens on an internal level, then the results on an external level remain the same. So if you would like to have new results, new experiences, and goals come to fruition in 2020 that are greater, that are more expansive, that are bigger than ever, they've been in your life before, then it's going to mean being a different you. If you don't change you, then nothing out there is going to change. So how do you do that? How do you become a different you? I mean, we get comfortable, right? We get comfortable with ourselves. We get comfortable with where we live. We get comfortable with who we spend time with and the places we go. I'll give you an example. Just get in your car today as you drive home and see if you don't take the exact same route home that you take every single day. Even if you're walking, if you're going to the store, if you're going to the market, you have a preferred direction that you go because you've gone that way before and it's familiar and you just keep repeating the pattern. So in order to get a different result, you actually need to create a new dynamic within you. I was having a conversation at a networking event last night with someone who was talking about the habits of his culture and how frustrated he is with how some people, he said all people, but I think it's just some people. Um, a gross generalization is never accurate, but nonetheless, to make the point, this, that people in his culture have a tendency to respond to the stresses of life in pretty predictable ways. So they either eat a lot, drink a lot, cheat on their spouses, medicate themselves with television, or just any kind of avoidance strategy possible to not look in the mirror and say, hey, I am greater than this. I am worth more than this. I am more powerful than this. And it actually turned out to be a conversation that, you know, he's, he's my muse <laughs> for this video. So thank you. So what causes that? Well, first of all, you have to care enough about how you feel in order to dig in deep and find the resolve to make the changes that are necessary. Because if you don't care how you feel, then you're willing to be unhappy. And if you're overweight, if you're underpaid or under earning, if you're using drugs or alcohol or television to avoid your greatness, to avoid creating more, doing more, being more, having more, then you really don't care how you feel. So you see, that's got to be the first step. The first step is making a decision that you care enough 
about how you feel that you're just first of all not willing to allow yourself to not feel good secondly to find ways tools guidance information to actually feel better to be happy and that should be your number one step is to choose to be happy so today i was having a conversation with a prospective client and he works for a company that has about 75 people working there and they have tremendous tremendous potential that is not even being considered much less tapped into so my question to him he's 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 part of upper management my question to him is what's your strategy for 2020 have you masterminded that as a team yet have you whiteboarded it have you sat down together and and mapped that out and discussed it and his response was yes but i wasn't included it's a very quiet closed door policy interesting isn't it the top-down approach, the command control approach, which I have a whole series I'm going to do on that, so I'm not going to get into that today. And um, as I asked him where he was at with all of that, it came increasingly more obvious how unhappy he is. This is a 52-year-old man that has worked for Fortune 500 companies. He's even done a startup. He's been on high performing teams and now he finds himself in a company that has zero transparency, zero inclusion, and he's absolutely miserable. They don't even want to hear his ideas, much less implement them. So what's his go to? He goes to alcohol, he goes to food, he goes to whatever he can to avoid looking at and dealing with because change can be hard, that experience that he's having. So the first step with this is to really care enough about how you feel and that you're feeling inspired, that you're feeling creative, that you're feeling enthusiastic, that you understand that you're the creator, the generator, the receiver, and the allower of your success. This is the first step. And then you can actually start to look within for the changes that you want to make instead of looking outside of you for something to mask it, for something to bide your time essentially until what? You retire, until you know the universe knocks you over the head with a frying pan and says, here's a new opportunity. You know, usually when you're in that blocked, restrictive mindset those opportunities can't even get to you because you can't recognize it even if the universe did knock you over the head with a frying pan. So this is the first step. Now, uh, secondly then is to uh, get yourself into alignment with you. And this needs to happen consistently. So it's not just one thing. You know, I spoke in my last video about meditation and spending time each morning prepping your day. Like I spend every morning probably a good hour, maybe 90 minutes preparing for my day. Does that mean I get up super early? Yes. Sometimes it means five o'clock in the morning. If I have an 8 a.m. meeting I have to get to, then sometimes it's getting up at 4.30. Look, whatever it takes. You know, I remember Stephen Covey in his one book, he said, you know, you got to sharpen the saw. You got to prime the pump. You got to set the tone. You got to set the stage. You got you to prep the material. You're the material. Take the time to prep that. And life comes at you. Not everyone you're dealing with all day long is in alignment and it can pull you out of alignment when you're dealing with people that are in resistance mode that are uh, not really in alignment with themselves enough that they can they know how to ask for what they need they know how to collaborate they know how to how to integrate what you're bringing to them into a something that's successful they don't know how to receive 
So you have to put yourself into alignment. And sometimes that's a moment to moment situation during the day. So yes, I'm going for a lunch hour workout because instead of grinding it out in front of my computer, my body needs to move. And creating that for yourself is really the key because now what we're doing is we're cultivating a different you and that different you is creating new experiences and bringing in new situations, new partners, new collaborative efforts, new ways of thinking that allow you to recognize the opportunities that you can then turn into profits, that you can turn into revenue, that you can turn into fulfillment and happiness and health, good health. So the other thing you need to do, this is the third thing, is to shift your focus. So your focus have to shift into high performance rather than some kind of leveling off. I was just speaking with uh, someone from my team who's actually based in another country. And as we're building out the strategy for 2020 and beyond into the next decade, I always ask everyone on my team, what is it you want for your life? What is your vision? for your life in the five areas of your life, you know, finance, relationships, health, personal development, business growth. Tell me what it is that you want for your life and let's ensure that as working with me and for my company, that you're getting your personal life to where you want it to be because that's true fulfillment. That's true fulfillment when everything is in alignment. You're not a different person as a dad that you are as a husband or that you are as the, the CEO or that you are as the guy coaching baseball. You are one person and who you're being with yourself, that relationship with yourself is how you show up in every way. Whether you realize it or not, you might think you're masking it. You might think that you're able to sort of put a layer of veneer over it or a smoke screen around it and people won't see through. But we are living in this time of complete transparency. We're all seeing each other. And the beauty of that is we get to help each other and we get to have compassion for one another's growth because not every day necessarily is going to be a high performance day. You know, we have rhythms, we have a need sometimes to kind of step back and to recalibrate. And so as you are concluding this month, this year and this decade, please, please consider what is it that you would like to create your life to be and then become that person because it's going to require you being a different you, a greater you, a more expanded version of you in order to get those bigger goals, those bigger realizations and those more rewarding relationships, especially the relationship that you have with yourself. So thank you again for being a part of my life. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate your thumbs up. Definitely subscribe, please, and share this with your tribe. Let's get this out to thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people around the planet so that we can help each other create what it is that we would like to experience in this lifetime. Wishing you a blessed day and I will see you tomorrow. Ciao.